Using the Solid principles in C-sharp is important for the design of a .NET application. Solid is an acronym with each letter representing a design principle. We'll go through each one and demonstrate an example. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash roundthecode to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn .NET, Dependency Injection and Blazor WebAssembly with Round the Code's online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. The S stands for Single Responsibility Principle. It states that there shouldn't be more than one reason for a class to change. Each class should have its own single responsibility. So on here we've got a team service, so we've got to create, update and delete. That's fine because that's related to the team. But we've also got an add to competition, which is also related to the competition. If we wanted to make a subclass on this team service, we'd have to inherit the competition methods every time. A better way of doing this is to create a new class called competition service and move the add to competition method inside there. The benefits of doing it this way is that if we want to add more competition methods, we can add it in the competition service class, so it won't make the team service class too big. Open close principle is what the O stands for. What this states is that a software entity should be open for extension, but closed for modification. In front of me, I've got two classes: a class of car and motorbike, and they both have a property of wheels. If we go a bit further down, we've got this class here of wheel. And what this is doing is it's counting the total number of wheels on all the vehicles. So it's passing it in as an object array, going through each of the vehicles, and it's seeing what the type is, and it's declaring it as that type, and then getting the wheels property. Now this violates the principle. One reason it's not open for extension, because if we were to create a new vehicle like a bus, we wouldn't be able to use this as it is. And it's not closed for modification either, because we'd have to modify this method. So the best way of doing this is to create a new abstract class. And we're going to call it vehicle. And we're going to move the wheels property into there. Afterwards, we're going to inherit the vehicle class into the car and also into the motorbike. That means we can remove the wheels as well from the motorbike as the car. We can now make this type safe as well. So we can pass in a vehicle array. And we can also reduce the code on this so we can get rid of all of this. We know now that the vehicle is a type of vehicle here. So the vehicle variable here is a type of wheel. So we can just call the dot wheels there. And now it's open for extension and closed for modification. If we wanted to add a new vehicle like a bus, we could do so without doing that. The Liskov substitution principle is what the L stands for. What this states is how a child class behaves with its parent class. If you start overriding the parent's members with an exception, you're generally violating this principle. So in this instance here, we've got an abstract class of vehicle, which has a property of wheels and helmet design. With the car class, it's inheriting the vehicle class, but we're overriding the helmet design because typically in a car, unless you're in some sort of motorsport, you wouldn't wear a helmet. So we're overriding this, but of course now this is changing the behavior of the parent class, which is the vehicle class. So we're violating the principle. So the best way of doing this is to remove the helmet design from the vehicle class and create a new interface, which we're going to call iHelmet. And we're going to move the helmet design into there. What we can do now is we can remove the helmet design from the car. So what we have to do with the motorbike is we need to implement the iHelmet interface. And now we can just bring in the property of helmet design. And now the car, because we don't have to wear a helmet, it doesn't have to include anything related to the helmet. Interface segregation principle is what the I stands for. What this does is that a class that inherits an interface should include all of its members. Now in C-sharp, you can inherit multiple interfaces, so it makes sense to split them all out. So in this example here, we've got an interface of iTeam, which has properties of ball count and wicket count. 
We've then got two classes here. We've got the cricket team, which inherits the I team and includes all the properties. Now we can see with the cricket team that this is all relevant, it has a name, cricket has a ball, so that's relevant, and it also has wickets in its game. However, for the pool team, the name is fine and so is the ball count, but in the game of pool, you don't have wickets. So this is violating this principle. So the best way of doing this is to split the wicket count out of the iTeam interface and we're going to create a new interface called iWicket and we're going to move the wicket count into the iWicket. Now with the cricket team, because we know that that has wickets, what we can do is we can include another implementation of an interface and we're going to implement iWicket. As a result, we can remove the wicket count from the pool team and it's still going to compile, so that's now working for us. The dependency inversion principle is the final principle. What this states is that high level classes shouldn't depend on low level classes. All classes should depend on abstractions rather than details. So what we've got here is we've got two interfaces of iRemote Control Service and iTV Service. These two are not dependent on each other, so the benefits of this is that if we wanted to replace a remote control for the TV, we could do that without replacing the TV. And a similar thing with the TV as well. If we needed to replace that, we could still use the remote control on other TVs. What we were doing in the remote control service is we're going into a bit more detail as to how it works. So we've got the press on button and what this is doing is it's calling the ITV service and it's turning it on. Now this TV service could be for any TV and in ASP.NET Core there's a built-in IOC container. With that, that means that this implementation here might have a different instance if it's running as a web application than if it's doing test-driven development. So that's the benefits of using dependency injection and following this principle. Let us know in the YouTube comments what you think about solid principles. Does it allow you to write cleaner code that is more readable and more scalable? Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.